The counterbalance assembly does the heavy lifting to open any garage door. Without the counterbalance, the garage door is dead weight. The main components of the counterbalance assembly are the springs, cones, shaft, center and end bearing plates, and the drums. Let's look more into each individual piece to understand their contribution to the counterbalance assembly. The torsion spring provides the lifting capability of the counterbalance assembly. Springs are designed and manufactured specifically to create a lifting force, which we will explain in detail later. One end of the spring, known as the stationary end, is secured to the center bearing plate. The other end, known as the winding end of the spring, gets wound and secured to the shaft. Once secured to the shaft, the spring's lifting force is transferred to the rest of the counterbalance assembly. Connecting the spring and its lifting force to the rest of the assembly makes cones critical to the counterbalance assembly. Cones can come in many different shapes and sizes. Typically, there is always one stationary cone and one winding cone on each torsion spring. There are two main ways to assemble cones on springs, manually in the field and mechanically at the manufacturer. Drums are like the wheels on a car. Where the motor transfers power through a drive shaft to the wheels, so do the springs transfer power through the shaft to the drums. The drums are secured to the shaft on the inside of the end bearing plates, and then cables are attached to both the drum and the bottom of the garage door. These cables allow the drum and the counterbalance assembly to lift the door. The shaft component of the counterbalance assembly is similar to the drive shaft in a car. It takes the power from the motor or springs and transfers it to the wheels or drums in order to raise and lower the garage door. The shaft runs through the bearing plates, springs, cones, and drums, which all attach to the shaft. The shaft can be either solid steel or hollow steel tube and can also be keyed or unkeyed. There are two different types of plates, the center bearing plate and the end bearing plate. The purpose of bearing plates is to allow the shaft to spin freely and still be securely fastened to the garage wall. Bearing plates will also keep the shaft aligned with the other counterbalance components and the rest of the door assembly. Now that you know the pieces for a counterbalance assembly, let's look more into the details of a torsion spring. A torsion spring is made by bending raw wire into a specific inside diameter, or ID. Inside diameters can range from just over an inch to up to almost 8 inches. Wire sizes and wire diameters can range from 0.125 up to 0.625. Springs are coated and then stenciled with the corresponding wire size or diameter and length of the wire as well as color coded. After the spring is produced, the winding cone and stationary cone can be installed. This can be done during the manufacturing or on the job site. The stationary cone is used to secure the torsion spring to a center or end bracket. The winding cone is where an installer uses winding bars to wind the spring and then secure it to a torsion shaft with the set screws. A torsion spring gets wound and uses the counterwind force created as an equalizer for the door. A wound torsion spring holds a lot of torque and can be very dangerous, but it is still the safest type of spring for a homeowner as it is contained on the torsion tube or shaft and will not break away or fly throughout the garage when broken. A garage door is balanced by the correctly installed and wound torsion spring. A well-balanced door should move easily through its operation by hand and be able to stop halfway without falling down or going up. Each door and application is unique, but with more specific standardizations than ever, there are some common specifications that should be mentioned. Most residential torsion springs have an ID of inch and three quarter or two inches. Residential single wide doors typically have one torsion spring, while double wide doors have two torsion springs. As stated before, each door and application is unique. Therefore, never assume a pass spring is correct or guess on what should be used. Repairing or building a counterbalance assembly is a common task. The average life cycle for a garage door assembly is a minimum of 10,000 cycles. Since most families use their garage door as the main entrance to their house, the garage door may see the 10,000 cycle mark within five to seven years on average. This means the typical homeowner will come across a broken spring and need replacement. 